Welcome back, everybody. So as the weather warms up, it's not just our wardrobes that need a seasonal update. Our taste buds, they crave a change too. So cast off those woolly sweater wines and sip on something light and fresh and new. So here with all of the wine trends to look out for this spring is Natalie McLean. She offers Canada's most popular online wine classes. Welcome back. We love it when you're here, Natalie. Mel Laney, great to see you. Natalie, it's great to see you too. And I am so excited about these wine trends, especially our first one, which is pink Prosecco. Why mm. is this so popular right now? Well, Lainey, you take two already trendy wines, so rosé and Prosecco, and you combine them for a mashup of this season's hottest wine trend, especially as the temperature soars. So what's news is that the Italian wine regulatory body just approved this new category of wine, Prosecco Rosé. And so these wines are just starting to arrive here in Canada, kind of like the spring tulips that are just popping up their heads now from the ground, and they're just as pretty. It is coming up roses, and we are about to dive in. You have brought us two pink Proseccos to try, so tell us about them both as, of course, we taste test just to make sure they're great, Nat. You are so <laughs> for these viewers. I, I so admire that. So let's start with the <laughs> Giavello. It's light. It's got aromas of tiny little field strawberries. Um, it's fresh. It's crisp. It's lively. And what I love about this one, these wines is that they're low in alcohol. This one is just 11%. Ooh. How do you like it, do you? Yeah, it's refreshing. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, say, a Cabernet or Shiraz that would clock in around 14 or 15 percent alcohol that is not what you want when the temperature soars this is your go-to this is nice that i'll be coming back to later next one <laughs> that's great so the next one i have for you to try ladies is this mayonetto again a prosecco rosé it's crisp and lively just 11 percent alcohol you've got you know some juicy ripe berry flavors coming through in it and i think it's Interesting to note that low alcohol is also a trend that we're seeing across the board in other wine Ooh. categories this spring. Similar but different. Yeah, they're really good. Mm. Is the Minetto a little drier? Uh, a touch, but what's really interesting that you bring up this point, uh, Lainey, is that all rosé proseccos are made in a dry style, from extra dry to dry. There are no sweet versions. So when you go shopping mm. for these bubblies, you know you're going to get uh, a dry, crisp, refreshing, uh, sparkling. But uh, yes, this one will be just a bit drier than the blue mm. Giavello. How do you serve them? So I'd suggest serving these bubblies and all sparkling wines at about uh, eight degrees Celsius. So if you're taking them out of the fridge, the fridge is about four degrees Celsius. So you wanna let them rest a little bit on the kitchen counter for say 10 minutes, bring them up to eight degrees Celsius where you can actually smell and taste them. And here's an inside tip. So if the okay. bottle is sweating with condensation, it's too cold. If the glass ah. mists over it before it, it's too cold. Oh. So let those wines warm up just a little so you get all those nice field berry aromas. Ooh, hot tip, Good hot tip. tip. Okay, <laughs> um, next one you say this spring, it is Chardonnay all day. So what is it about <laughs> uh, Chardonnay that is going to take us through this next season? Well, Chardonnay is back, baby, and it's hotter than ever, especially this spring. So for years, this poor beleaguered grape was pushed aside by the anything but Chardonnay trend, ABC. It even had a name, and that's because it got just a little too popular. It was grown everywhere, made in so many styles. It, it was kind of like that overexposed uh, celebrity that we love to hate. Lady, <laughs> quick, come up with a name. Taylor Swift. <laughs> and so what was happening is it was also heavily oaked and oak is considered the ketchup of the wine world when it's overused to hide winemaking flaws. But Chardonnay has pivoted. It's reinvented itself. It's clean and crisp, oak free, kind of like that celebrity who's now doing Instagram videos without filters or makeup. <laughs> so now what you won't get is that heavy, buttery, oaky taste from these wines. Instead, they're fresh, they're clean, they're crisp. Again, just what you want as the temperature starts to rise. All right, let's get ready to slay this Chardonnay. What do you have for us? What can we taste? All right, so first of all, we have Hobnob Chardonnay from the south of France. Now, typically the most famous region for unoaked Chardonnay is in more north in France, in the northern tip of Burgundy, Chablis. 
Um, but there you're going to pay a lot more for these wines. This one is only $13 and I think you'll find it's vibrant, it's fresh, it's got notes of green apples. It really gets your juices running. I was not expecting this flavor. Yeah, I'm very surprised by this. It's um, usually Me when too. I taste a Chardonnay, I taste it right away. I taste it on my tongue, I taste it in my cheeks. Yeah. I can feel yeah. a Chardonnay. This is not doing that. No, mm. it's, it's crisp and refreshing. Again, what we want for spring, we don't nice. want a mouthful of liquid butter. <laughs> we want something that's gonna refresh us while we're out on the patio or the deck or wherever we're enjoying our glass. Beautiful. So I have another Chardonnay for you to try, Camisole. Even the name sounds light and airy and fresh, um, but it's Camisole Chardonnay, stainless Chardonnay from California. And that is something to look for on the label if you're looking for a fresh, clean, uh, lighter Chardonnay style. Ooh, you're liking it. All right, see, it's still got all the flavor, but it's, it's light and, and crisp. What stainless means on the label is that the wine was fermented and aged in stainless steel tanks. So the wine never cozied up to an oaky barrel. So it's clean and crisp and fresh. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can taste that. Can you taste that, Lane? Like you don't taste any of those other things. I can. I mean, it's a it's a big difference the, between the first and the, mm -hmm. the France and the California. Like it is, it's the French ones, it, 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 the taste is much more, the only word I can think of is gardeny. Okay, yeah. Complex, yeah. And I should note, um, I mentioned the price of this one, 13 bucks for the uh, hobnob. The California is 25, but it, I think it's still a great value for what it is. Because if you look at entry-level Burgundian Chardonnays, you're starting at 40, $50 and going up. Wow. And even the two Seccos, yeah, they're, they're only $16 each. But you think um, like entry-level champagne starts at $75. Natalie, you always have the best answers for anybody who's either new to wine or really experienced. But here's a really basic question. If I don't have time to really chill my wine the way or as long as it's recommended, what is the shorthand way to chill something you want to drink kind of quickly? I get that need and I'm here to help. <laughs> so instead of just putting it in the fridge, which probably will take an hour or so, stick the bottle in a bucket of ice water. And I say ice water, not ice, because ice water, the chill of the ice uh, water temperature will completely coat the bottle as opposed to a bucket of ice cubes is going to have warm pockets of air that will not bring down the temperature as quickly as the ice water. The second way you could do this is to stick it in the freezer, but wrap a cold, wet cloth and it's going to come down in temperature even quicker than if you just put it in the freezer on its own. Oh, hot tips, love. The third trend and final trend is going local. You're suggesting that we're, we explore our local wines this season, right? Absolutely. Drinking local has never been hotter. And I think one of the positives of the pandemic is that we have started to, to discover the pleasures of drinking wines that are made in our own backyards. And I think that supporting Canadian wineries has, has never been really more important uh, because they've had to close down, their restaurant uh, business has decreased substantially, as you can imagine. So support them not only by buying Canadian wines, but if you're permitted to visit them uh, this spring or summer, they make a wonderful uh, getaway, like a local getaway stop for a weekend of uh, staying close to home, but still having lots of fun. Yeah, amen to that. So what uh, two stars have you brought for us to taste today? These are just spectacular. I'm so excited about these wines. The first one is 30 Bench Pinot Noir from Niagara's Beamsville Bench. And it's medium bodied, it's like liquid silk on your palate. It's got fleshy ripe berries that just sort of unfurl as you drink it. Yes. Wow, that is smooth. I've also got a Pinot Noir from British Columbia for you. This is Quails Gate from the Okanagan Valley. Again, it's medium body, it's liquid velvet. It's got those same ripe berry aromas. The other one was smooth and this one's bold. Mm. Yeah, this one comes up with an uppercut just a little bit at the end. The other one, yeah. the other one was just like, do, do, do. This one it's is like, like, hey, yeah, Pinot Noir is here. It's like one sister is super chill and the other sister is very dramatic. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> These are also what you want as the temperature heats up because Pinot mm. Noir 
cells in our cool climate in Canada. And that's because it's very expensive to make. It actually reacts to like uh, mildew pests. And it seems sometimes like conversations about a whisper in the vineyard. It's very high maintenance like that. Back to that <laughs> exposed celebrity, right? It takes a lot. <sighs> and, and the winemakers who grow it are self-described pathological optimists, kind of like the agents who manage the celebrity. But when it works, <laughs> it's just of beauty. It's so worth all of that pain and high maintenance. And it's just glorious. I said it at the top and I mean it, Natalie, we absolutely love it when you're here and educating us in the best way uh, that only you know how to do. So for that, thank you again. And let's cheers to the spring right. wine season ahead. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you after right. this. Cheers. All right.